The purpose of this video is to show how to provision additional IP CIDR ranges within a VCN. Common reasons for creating more than one CIDR block is to increase the amount of available IP addresses, introduce network segmentation, or the need to migrate OCI resources from an existing IP network range to a different network range. We'll take a look at a VCN with an existing IP CIDR block of 10.0.0.0/16. And we'll start by creating two additional IPv4 ranges along with an IPv6 range. From there, we'll create new subnets using these new ranges and verify connectivity between the different subnets. Let's begin. Within the VCN, on the left side resources menu, let's select the CIDR blocks prefixes option. From there, we'll click add CIDR blocks IPv6 prefix button. Within this menu, we can actually add our IPv4 or our IPv6 prefixes as needed. For my first block, I'll add 10.1.0.0/16 and leave that as is. Hit add CIDR blocks. Once finished, I can add another CIDR blocks. Up to five can be added for IPv4. Let's select add CIDR block again. This time, I'm going to use a 192.168.0.0 slash 24 CIDR block. Once that's finished, let's add one more CIDR block, this time for IPv6. Just like IPv4, you can add up to five uh, IPv6 prefixes as well. For this, I'm going to let Oracle allocate a global unique uh, address range for us. Once that's complete, Let's move over to our subnets and actually begin assigning uh, these ranges to a subnet that we can use for our OCI resources. In the subnets menu, let's go ahead and click create subnet. So from the 10.1 CIDR block, we'll create a subnet from that. I'll just give it the same name as the CIDR block itself. So 10.1.0.0 slash 16. Then I enter in the actual IPv4 CIDR block there. And we'll also carve out the IPv6 prefix as well for this. So these will be a slash 64 when you're using a Oracle allocated IPv6 prefix. Note that this is always required as well. When you use IPv6, you also need to provision an IPv4 CIDR block to go along with it. And once that's done, we'll go ahead and create one more subnet. This time it will be for the 192.168 slash 24 using the same IPv4 CIDR block. And once again, we'll provision the IPv6 slash 64 prefix as well. And once done, we'll click create subnet. I place the VM inside of every subnet that we just created to verify connectivity of between each of the subnets. As you see, I have a 10.0 for this VM and a 10.0 slash 16 subnet. My 10.1 slash 16 subnet, I have a VM that has not only an IPv4 address, but also an IPv6 address. And I did the same thing for my VM that's deployed in the 192.168.0.0 slash 24 subnet. It has both an IPv4 and an IPv6 subnet. So let's start back on our 10.1 subnet. And what I want to do is attempt to ping that for my 10.0 slash 16 subnet, the original subnet. Now notice I'm unable to ping currently. And then shortly I'll tell you why, but let's run the same test. This time let's ping an IPv6 subnet. So I'll take the IPv6 IP address and from a 192.168 network, I'm going to ping back to the IPv6 address. And just like the IPv4 IP address, this one's also unpingable. And this is entirely due to uh, security rules. To correct this issue, I created a new custom security list 
that allow ICMP traffic between the various subnets. I created ingress rules for the three IPv4 siders along with the two IPv6 siders. Once this was created, I went back to my subnets and I applied the security list to each subnet individually. Now that they all have the same security posture, let's go ahead and test this connectivity again. With my security list in place, let's go ahead and run these same tests again. So for my 10.0.0/16 network, I'm going to ping my 10.1.0.0/16 VM. So I'll copy that. All right, we'll go back and let's attempt to ping this IP address. And now we're successful. So let's do the same thing for our IPv6 address. I go to this VM, I'll copy its IPv6 address there. And then from the other VM that also has an IPv6 address, I will ping this IPv6 that we just copied. And as expected, we're getting ping replies back now. This concludes our demo. Uh, we've configured multiple CIDR blocks within a VCN. We've created subnets from those CIDR blocks for IPv4 and IPv6 networks. And we verified that these networks are reachable from different networks as well. To learn more about OCI and best practices, please visit our website at OCI.com.